we know that moment of inertia of any system is summation of product of mass of each particle with the square of the distance we also know that moment of inertia changes whenever the axis of rotation changes say for example we are having a body let we have calculated the moment of inertia about this axis let that value is equal to i how do we calculate we'll identify the mass of each particle from the axis of rotation we will identify the distance of each particle from the axis of rotation we calculate mr square for each particle and we will add it for all the particles which is a little bit lengthy process and mathematically you need a process called integration to do it so with all that uh, process and difficulty you have calculated moment of inertia now if someone say i am not rotating the body about that axis but i have changed the body about rotating the body about some another axis automatically moment of inertia changes then again calculating the mass of each particle their distance from the axis of rotation squaring them multiplying with the mass and adding up for all the particles together becomes further very lengthy we don't want to do it we want to do it in a simple way how do we do it if we know moment of inertia about one axis we shall have a way to calculate the moment of inertia about a parallel axis assuming that these two axes are uh, parallel to each other between them let there is a distance r if the first axis is passing through center of gravity to the center of the body or the center of the gravity if the mass of the body is all together is m and the second axis is parallel to each other to calculate the moment of inertia about the parallel axis we can use a formula moment of inertia of the body about an axis passing through center of gravity and product of mass of the body with the square of the distance of separation between the two parallel axes this theorem is called parallel axis theorem so by this time you might have understood that uh, why do we need a parallel axis theorem because calculating moment of inertia for any body is a lengthy process again calculating it whenever the axis of rotation changes becomes further lengthy and a time waste process to make it simple if you know the moment of inertia of the body about an axis passing through center of gravity we can calculate the moment of inertia of the same body about a parallel axis using the parallel axis theorem so how can i define it moment of inertia of the body about any given axis is equal to sum of moment of inertia of the same body about an axis passing through center of gravity and product of mass of the body with the square of the distance between the two parallel axes this makes it easy to calculate moment of inertia with a parallel axis similarly suppose uh, i have a situation like there is a body i know the moment of inertia of the body about one axis let this is x axis ix i have calculated if i know the moment of inertia of the same body about a perpendicular axis both of them are passing through the same point these two axes are in the same plane if i know the moment of inertia about these two axes i can calculate the moment of inertia of the same body about a perpendicular axis passing through the same point and of course perpendicular to the plane using a formula ij equal to ix plus iy this theorem is called perpendicular axis theorem so why do we need a perpendicular axis theorem when we know the moment of inertia of the body about two perpendicular axes passing to the same point in the same plane we can calculate the moment of inertia of the same body about another perpendicular axis who is perpendicular to the plane using the perpendicular axis theorem so how can i define it moment of inertia of any body about a point is equal to the sum of moment of inertia of the same body about two perpendicular axes passing to the same point in the perpendicular plane so this parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem 
makes calculation of moment of inertia easy moment of inertia easy if you don't have this parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem every time we have to go to the integration process which is a lengthy process that's why parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem are always of great help